Are you an entrepreneur or ready to become a boss? Welcome to Hawaii Boss, the business podcast made in Hawaii, where you will hear from island movers and shakers on who they are and their impact on our state. And now, step into the office of your host for Hawaii Boss, David Pettyjohn. Aloha, Hawaii Boss podcast listeners listening, watching, wherever you listen in for your podcast. We're on YouTube. We're also on Spotify. We're also all over the place where you get your uh, your podcast. So we're excited today because we're going in, we went into the very important boss's office here of Captain uh, Tawane. Uh, and he's here for us as a recruiter. He's a, uh, the company commander of this recruiting station here in Honolulu. And you know, may not be for everybody, but for a guy like me, who I, uh, a long time ago, I was also a recruit. And so we're here to find out what it means to have a career in the Army, but also from a very special perspective uh, from uh, Captain T, as he's uh, lovingly known. Uh, Captain T, welcome. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to be on this platform and kind of like share our story. You know, sure. Of, you know, how we came up to this position. Sure. Well, now, so you're, are you from Hawaii? No, I'm not from Hawaii. So tell us a little bit, uh, you know, how you made it to, to, to Hawaii. You know, where did you, you come up? So I actually grew up in uh, American Samoa. And, uh, you know, just uh, southwest of Hawaii from here. Uh, and it's uh, about 5,000 miles away from Hawaii. How long is that flight? Uh, it's about like five hours. Five hours, not too yeah. bad. So, you know, growing up on the islands, I, uh, you know, I did a little bit of community college there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was able to, you know, I was like, oh, man, you know, what? I need to find a change of scenery so uh, I decided to join the Army Reserves uh, and and you know I was there at the 411th FSC in American Samoa okay. so uh, leaving for basic training that was actually my first uh, time leaving the island and uh, <laughs> how was that for culture shock where'd you go to boot camp uh, I actually went to Fort Sill Oklahoma oh, okay uh, little that change was, up in the a uh, little different environment, huh? Yeah, it was, you know, it's, uh, it was actually a culture shock, like you, like you said. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, it's just something that I, I haven't seen any, you know, skyscrapers or any buildings right. up here. And it was, you know, it was different. It, uh -huh. was, it was much bigger than, uh, uh, than the islands. Well, I imagine. Uh, so now you, you came up, did you always, you know, change the scenery? The military sometimes offers that. But did you have any other, <clears throat> excuse me, career aspirations when you were like a kid? There was your first job. What, what, what did you do? So growing up, I, I always wanted to be a police officer. Oh, okay. Uh, but, you know, things just didn't work out the way it was. And uh -huh. uh, I found this path uh, more interesting. So I, I guess, you know, instead of being a police officer for, you know, such a small island of Samoa, now. Right. I guess we're the police officer for the world now. <laughs> That's right. Well, and and a lot of, well, at that age when you're younger, you know, the, and it sounds like you've got some education and things, but you, there is this wanderlust, you know, being on an island. A lot of people from here to Hawaii, they're kind of like, I got to get out of here. I got to see something a little bit different. And all I've seen is this place, and it feels like a really small, small world. And so you wanted to get out there. Where did you envision that you were going to go? You joined the reserves. Where did you think you were going to? So, you know, you know, when I first started, I really didn't envision myself going anywhere else other than Samoa, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think being in the reserves, we were doing annual training in, mm -hmm. in Hawaii and, okay. and all these other places. Uh, and then from there, I, I kind of like, oh, man, you know, I actually like traveling. So, uh -huh. you know, from there, I, uh, my, you know, I went into active, well, I did the UH program. Uh, Here in Manoa, a program like a Reserve Officer Training Corps, ROTC, is yeah, that what it that's is? That's correct, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I did that program, uh, and then I went to Shamana University. So it was kind of like a, you know, two thing, right? So I did the ROTC, military science, mm -hmm. at UH, mm -hmm. but I also did the my bachelor's degree at Shamana University. Okay. And you know, bachelor's degree was in uh, criminal justice, which you know, you, that's what you want. You're still in the police mode, you know. Right, you're still yeah. okay. Uh, but then you know, when you graduate uh, from UH, it wasn't. Like there are other branches out there that you have to pick, right? So I, I chose a uh, quartermaster, which, you know, later turns into logistics officer, right? right? That's sort uh, of the old term they used to use. The quartermaster was the one who, the supply guy, right, you know, right? The supply guy. Uh -huh. So in the rear with the gear. <laughs> <laughs> what but, do they uh, call ramp or something like that? I don't know what that means, but. Uh. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. But, uh, you know, for, you know, I started off there, and then, uh, you know, everything, uh, I got commissioned here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then I went into active duty. 
So it's a little different path than some people because there's an enlisted path, which is which is a little different than an officer path. Officer like you, Captain, you're sort of uh, mid-career now. Captain is sort of like, okay, I'm going to make this sort of my, uh, you know, when did you decide that this is your full-time thing? You think this is what you want to do? So when I, um, when I graduated from American Samoa mm -hmm. uh, Community College, uh, that's when I got contracted to be a, an SMP, which is a simultaneous membership program. Okay. Yeah, you know, what that means though is you're an, an enlisted soldier in the reserve, mm -hmm. but you go, once you get your bachelor's degree and finish your military science, mm -hmm. which is ROTC, then you get that uh, to commission and go into active duty or whatever reserve or active duty. Mm -hmm. But that's when I decided, it was back in Samoa, mm -hmm. uh, I decided that, hey, you know, I like the Army and this is what I'm, I want to do, as, but as an officer. Right. And it's a real opportunity to get out and, and see the world, but you, it seems sort of fortunate because there's a lot of places where you might have to go, like you may have to do a duty station in Oklahoma or, or like you said, you did your basic training there, but logistics, you could go anywhere, but somehow uh, you ended up back in Hawaii. What are the opportunities for some of these guys, like they want to join up? You know, they want to come back to Hawaii. Is that is that some sort of option for them? Well, there's there's a lot of opportunities to come back to Hawaii, right? So you know, you got the 25th ID, you know, that's up at sure. Schofield, uh, and then you've got um, you know the user pack that's at Fort Fort Shafter Flat, uh -huh. that uh, that is also active duty. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, if you're in a reserve, uh, you also have you know what's called AGR, which is Active Guard Reserve. What that means, so is you're okay. a reserve soldier but you are considered an active duty soldier, so, yeah. but still work for the reserve full time. And that has some great benefits over the National Guard, right? Because, um, you know, we're not, we don't want to say anything you know, negative about the Hawaii National Guard, they have a role, but when you're a reserve, active duty reserve uh, soldier, you're getting all these federal benefits, right? You're kind right. of gearing yeah. towards a federal retirement, which you don't necessarily in the, uh, in the, guard. In the guard, right? So there's yeah. some benefits that way, because after 20 years, there's in there a retirement where some people, you know, they're maybe they go in at 20 and by the time they're 40, they're retiring. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th that's the good thing about the army is, uh, um, you know, after 20 years of service, you know, you get to retire. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then from then, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot to go into the retirement system sure, sure. with the new thing, uh, the blended retirement system okay. where you can kind of like invest in your TSP and, uh, okay. Uh, the army matches your five percent and all the other stuff. Oh wow! So there's some some different financial incentives now that they're creating on top of the college fund and everything, which I yeah. used. I mean, the, the army college fund. It was the post uh, 9/11. No, it was pre 9/11 uh, GI Bill yeah. I used. And the and Montgomery uh, GI Bill. Yeah. And, uh, you know the Chapter 30, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, but the post 9/11, you know, it, it it pays for your whole tuition. Sure. You know, you get BAH. Uh -huh. You know for whatever it's like housing and yeah, basic uh -huh. allowance for housing uh -huh. uh, while you're still going to school so right. you know those are all the benefits that you can get to pursue a goal in education right. if that's what you're in for right so yeah there's some great incentives I mean I use my college fund to go to college and and uh, uh, I mean, it was certainly helpful but there's this whole thing about war yeah. <laughs> you know so there's that that risk you know you're signing up and there's all these great benefits but there's a chance you could deploy somewhere um, you know, and that's you know, right now it's across the world. I know people who have been deployed to Turkey, you know, uh, Germany, Poland. There's, there's so many different jobs too that are yeah, that's, available. Yeah, that's <clears throat> how, true. how do you guide someone if someone's interested? You know, they're like, okay, I, I'm not sure. But I remember when I was in high school, they came and they did like an ASVAB test or something like that. Like they go into all the high schools and like test everybody and see if that, what their aptitude is for the military. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny that you brought up the, uh, the subject of, uh, of war and, you know, some people are, are a little hesitant, right, mm -hmm. you know, about joining the Army. But, you know, the way that, that I look at it is, you know, there's uh, 150 jobs in the Army, right? Okay. And only 30 of them are combat jobs. Okay. And then what does the rest of that look like, right? right? That's all support, right? I mean, uh, about a few weeks ago, we had a guy from a brigade that uh, came down, and he was uh, actually a vocalist, uh, Star First Class Lewis, okay. right? And uh, <laughs> that's what he does for the Army, you know? He's in the Army band, and that's what he does. You know, there are supplies and all these other mechanic jobs to fix vehicles, right. you know? Yeah, I've heard that. They're band scholarships, right? They can go right, yeah. straight, you know, if they've done four years and, and then uh, they go in and then they get so much time <coughs> and they're actually playing and then they can still go to school while they're, right, while they're yeah. playing. Yeah. And that's what they do for the Army, you know. And, uh, you know, for the, the young generations that we have here, right? So mm -hmm. 
like how how do we help them right so the way that we help them is like hey the, the ASVAB is not really like a, a military test, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's more like a career exploration test sure. to, to find out like where you stand, whether you could be a perfect engineer, right? right, Or a perfect, you know, military police. Like what are the uh, the skill levels that mm -hmm. you have? Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, you know, that's what we offer in the ASVAB, right? right? It, it's, to, it's a career field exploration. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, if you get a, a good score, right? Most of the time, you know, if you score below a, a 50, you're considered a, you know, kind of like a, a Bravo. Mm -hmm. But if you score more than a 50, then you're considered an, an Alpha, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there... And that qualifies you for a, a sort of a larger array of jobs. Right, yeah. the, the Bravo, maybe, you know, not so much. Maybe there's some study you can do and maybe uh, to test again, retest. And sometimes yeah. that helps bring up the score. But that, that really does open up all those the Alpha jobs and things. Yeah. The, you know, the jobs, the bonuses, like, you know, we haven't even talked about the bonuses to where uh, it's up to 50000 right now for, for certain jobs, yeah. right? Right. And, and, you know, imagine just a, a high school student that just graduated high school, right? And you sign up for your first enlistment and you get a 50000 <laughs> That money's gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Hopefully there's a smart kid that gets that. But, uh, yeah, if I, if I had 50000 at 18, man, I would be in trouble. So, I don't know. <laughs> they might buy a new Tesla or something. That's right. But, uh, and put it down on it. Or a Hellcat. That's but, right. You know, <laughs> that happens too. <laughs> so the way we look at it, okay, you, you've done so well in the ASVAB, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, just because you take the ASVAB, and that's the other thing, you know, mm -hmm. most most of the, the kids, you know, they, they think I'm taking the ASVAB and I'm, they're going to make me join the Army. Right. That is not the case, right. right? So you take the ASVAB, now you have an option. If you pass it, you have an additional option to where, okay, all right, this scholarship's not working out for me, right. but the Army has something for right. me. So it's like a you know like another plan another option that you can take after right. you graduate, and um, all the services use that too because I remember after right, I took it I had yeah. the Navy recruiter calling me because they get the list of all the high school students or whatever like yeah. that and they were had the Navy recruiter call me almost signed up with the Navy and then uh, went and uh, joined the Army and told them I joined the Army and they were they were done with me like I get out of here you know but <laughs> anyway sometimes they're really competitive for these recruits right. right yeah they're very competitive you know but you know. It all depends, you know, it all depends on what, how you see, uh, you know, the Army and, and, and the other branches, right. you know, what they can offer you, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So that was a, sometimes people join because they already know what the benefits are because they've had family or something like right. that. And did you have family or anything who was in the military? or? So I had an uncle that was in the military, but, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say he was much of an influencer. Uh -huh. uh, it was more of a, uh, he was just there, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> But I think um, for me, it was more. It was more. Just another option for me right. that that I saw that was more beneficial in a way where I can get benefits for education, right. and then progress it as a, a career. Uh -huh. You know. So did they come in in the, while you were in school and kind of come talk to you and and things. How did they? How did you first find out about it? So I actually was a walk in. Oh, okay. You know, I just walked in one day. I. You know, when I was in Samoa, I graduated 2005, right? But uh -huh. I, I didn't really graduate with my associates uh, until like 2010. So you okay. can see that big gap there, right? right? But uh, in 2008, I, I decided, okay, let me go take the ASVAB mm -hmm. and then I'll walk into the recruiter's office. Right. Uh, and then what's funny is the recruiter was actually the guy from my village. No way. Uh, yeah, he, he wasn't really like a, a green shooter. He was more like a, uh, 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 what's it called? A civilian recruiter. Oh, okay. So they had like a, it was a DOD employer, yeah, Department DOD of Army. Yeah, DOD employer. Uh -huh. And uh, what's funny is, so my dad and him were kind of like uh, friends, right? Uh -huh. My middle name is his name. Oh, no. So like close <laughs> close family friend. Yeah, co close family mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. He lives in the same village. You know, my middle name is his uh, actual name. So uh -huh. I thought that was kind of weird. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I mean... It, it was a big step from from where you're at now, from where you were. When you say village, you mean it sounds like pretty remote and uh, and uh, maybe coming up uh, the first job you had kind of, you know, what kind of work did you have to do when you were, you know, that maybe prepared you for this uh, sort of being able to handle the Army life? So back home, you know, it was mostly like, you know, it was an easy life, you know, okay. but I wouldn't say easy physically, but it was uh, it was an easy life, you know. Uh -huh. uh, pretty straightforward. Pretty wake straightforward. up, work simple. to do, yeah, simple, eat, yeah. you know, we, see your family. You know, we plan our own food, and uh, and I I would say that was like the main thing. It was 
the discipline within mm -hmm. the culture, uh, kind of like develop us to sure to where we are today, mm -hmm. and then the physicality of things to where you know we would go to a plantation. Sometimes it'll be like two to three miles, uh, but if it's like you know round trip, then uh -huh. you're talking about like four miles. We'll we'll take coconuts, you know, climb right. coconuts, take plant, uh, banana. Uh, uh, plantain, bananas, and, and right. bring them back, or taro roots, uh -huh. whatever, whatever it is to, for, for our fam to for feed the family, family in the yeah. village and things. Yeah. We supply the family for yeah. for like the week or so. Yeah, I think there's a lot to learn uh, Polynesian lifestyle and culture that you know you see a lot of successful uh, military folks that are Polynesian, you know, and that, that yes, bring sir. that that uh, discipline and sort of that. Um, you know, they're already they already listen to their elders, right? They, there's right. no talking yeah. back, right? <laughs> there's no talking back. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know. Uh, Growing up in Samoa, it was a very different lifestyle. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like here to where, you know, you'll go to someone's neighbor and try right. to mess up their house and they you won't get a, you know, right. like some disciplinary right. action from there. Yeah, everybody knows everybody. everybody you step knows, out of line. Yeah, we'll a, get, they'll get you in line. Right. So. <laughs> there's consequences, sort of culturally. We bring it together right. and it's uh, maybe not always the funnest, but you remember, you know, you yeah. remember uh, what you know, the, <laughs> the, the the phrase they use, it takes a village uh -huh. to raise a child. And, uh, uh -huh. and I think for every Samoan kid that really grew up in Samoa right. with the culture, uh, and, and that's what they were really all about, mm -hmm. you know, everybody was raising each other's right. kids to make sure that, uh, that they were disciplined and, and respectful. Right. So yeah, and really when they say auntie and uncle, they mean, you right, know, that's Yeah, like they a, really mean it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like, okay, do you have anything for me? Like, you need me to do anything? Like, it's sort of like you have to check in before you leave and, and yeah. all those things. I'm leaving now. And, and uh, so, yeah, a lot of respect. And I think that's, I mean, goes hand in hand with the Army and the military lifestyle. Yes, so if you had to, you know, you now that you're you've out from your home and you've been in Hawaii, other places you've deployed? So I've, I've, I've gone to, I haven't really uh, deployed uh, to a, like a, a combat environment. Uh -huh. That's but, okay. Uh, we'll, well, it's okay. We can. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's crazy. Hey. You know, for being in for 14 years, uh, every unit that I've went to deactivates, right? So, you know, and, and you don't have to worry about, you know, you know where you go and all the other stuff because, you know, there's different opportunities everywhere you go. But for places that I went to, uh, I've been to Virginia at Fort mm -hmm. Lee mm -hmm. first for active duty. That was for my BOLIC, which was basic officer leadership course. Okay. Uh, from there, I went to my first unit. Well... I'm sorry, let me take it back, right? Sure. From there, it's funny because I, I found out, oh man, I finished Bolick and uh, I got there and they told me, hey, Lieutenant Tawani, uh, are you uh, tracking that you're going to airborne school? <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm going <laughs> so, you know, they, they sent me down to Fort Benning. Sure, sure, that's why I went to airborne school too. Yeah, I did uh, airborne school there and then I came back for rigor school at uh, all these schools I didn't even know and, you know, I'm scared of high school. They said it lined up for you, huh? And I, I was like, oh, man. But, you know, it was something different. You know, it was something different that I thought, okay, I never thought I would be able to do this. Uh -huh. So after that, I got assigned to my first airborne unit assignment, which was, you know, up in Alaska okay. uh, with uh, 425. And uh, it was great. That's it Fairbanks? Great. No, that's actually Anchorage. Oh, okay. Yeah, Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, it's kind of like close to where uh, they call it J-Bear. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, Joint Base uh, Elmendorf uh, Richardson. Sure, yeah, and they do some, uh, uh, w I remember going up there for some training, you know, with all the, uh, you know, you have to do s the cold water, or not cold water, sort of the, the cold weather, you know, training, because oh. it can can turn like that on you. And That was, <laughs> mm -hmm. that was a different experience. Yeah, we <laughs> actually uh, did, uh, it was called, yeah, cold weather uh, leadership training. When uh -huh. I first got there, uh, they told me, hey, Lieutenant Tawani, you know, you're going up to uh, Black Rabbits, and uh <laughs> That's right in the middle of nowhere, huh? It was in the middle of nowhere, and uh, it was close to the North Pole, I would say, like uh -huh. up at Fairbanks. Uh -huh. And uh, it was that was a culture shock, you uh -huh. know. You had to survive, you know, you know, going with skis, rock marching with uh, pulling uh, uh, an Akio, which is like a big sled with. Oh, okay, yeah, with all your gear there. and stuff. And uh, you had to, I think, like sleep out there for like 24 hours uh -huh. with no, with just your right. sleeping bag. All your training now have to put to use. Right. And, yeah. Uh, but the guys watching, you probably got some comms if there's something happened right. or whatever. But. Yeah, so it was a great experience, you know, just learn a, a different uh, survivability and a yeah. different element, I would right. say. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's adventures like that and, and more, you know, deployments that are possible. And, and again, my father-in-law, who was, uh, was a uh, Army chaplain, he would 
you know, sometimes to attach and deploy, but he wouldn't deploy to these uh, combat areas. You know, he'd go to different areas, but he had a big family, and sometimes it, you know, it worked out well for, for him. So I think there's, there is, though, some of that separation. My brother, who uh, re recently retired, you know, he had to do some tours in Afghanistan and, and some different things, and he's, uh, you know, just finished, but most of the time he was in the, he wasn't necessarily out in the front, he wasn't holding the gun, you know, he right, was working yeah. on the computers, and he was, you know, there's a lot of, other types of jobs that you're not out there with a, you know, with a gun just sitting waiting for the enemy. Right, yeah. It's, uh, you know, like I said before, you know, 150 jobs, 30 of them are combat. And then uh, most of them are, you know, support. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most of my career was, you know, I, I started off as a 21 whiskey in the mm -hmm. reserve, which was uh, carpentry and masonry. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not a combat job, right? It was right. Like building putting on some laying on some bricks right. or, and now you know here i am a, a logistics officer yeah uh, and how was the training though for that for the carpentry because again we always think about you know it and all these different kinds of things but there's still people that need to build things right, right and yeah. we're losing that skill they don't teach it in the trades anymore in school so how's the training for that how long was that uh that was about i would say uh 12 weeks uh -huh. Uh, the training was actually a, a joint uh, training with the Air Force and the Navies. Right, because uh, the CBs, the Navy, the Navy CBs, CBs, right? Yeah. So we were at uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, uh -huh. uh, and then from there we actually uh, learned how to lay bricks. And it was like for me, it was easy, right? Because you know most of my family back home uh -huh. uh, were either uh, carpenters or uh, or plumbers. Oh, okay. Right. So I kind of so grew up around that already. Right. Yeah. I kind of uh -huh. learned how to you know lay bricks. Uh, like for the churches or, mm -hmm. or for someone's house, mm -hmm. the neighbor's house, <laughs> and uh, you know, like so the the skill was already there. Uh -huh. But I think there was a, a lot of math that was involved in it, right? Uh, with you know building the uh, the structure for the uh, the upper part of the house. Yeah, where they say measure one, measure once, or measure <laughs> measure twice, cut once. Is yeah, measure right. twice, <laughs> cut once. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so you're able to bring that, and and but now you're you're you've advanced. That was your sort of your enlisted piece, and now uh, as a logistics officer, does, and now but a recruiter. You you were in logistics, and now how does that change? People, as you're an officer, you have different opportunities as you grow in your career. Yes, sir. So you know the reason why I'm here now. It's uh, you know, I did command at Fort Bliss, right? So okay. I did command for a forward support company, okay. which was, you know, uh, a key development for me mm -hmm. in my career field. Right. However, when you're done with command, uh, the Army gives you an opportunity to do broadening assignment. Okay. So recruiting is considered broadening assignment, and that's why I'm here today okay. now. Uh, fortunately, I, I had a, a really good interview with the, the boss, my, my boss at Portland, uh, and, and I think she decided that, hey, you know, this is the perfect guy for you. Right. Only because I had, like, connection with the, the 9th MSC, which is the biggest uh, reserve unit here in USERPAC. Okay. Uh, so you knew all those people, you'd right, be, yeah, and you'd be I, recruiting for that, uh, right, so for that group. Okay, we've been recruiting for those guys, and uh, you know the team, the, the team at Ninth MSC, they're kind of like spread around the, the the entire Pacific, like Alaska, Japan, Korea, Guam, mm -hmm. and just around this AO. Mm -hmm. uh, so we helped recruit for them, uh, and then you know I was part of the UHROTC as I spoke earlier. Okay, uh, so we kind of have that connection to uh, kind of like push. Uh, the students that want to become officers, because those are still going to be considered enlistment when we put them in. To yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's under an enlisted, right, uh, yeah. but it's an officer sort of track. Yes. So they get a, maybe an E four pay or E three pay or E five. E five. Okay. E5 so yeah. So it's really great benefits. You then. start off as E five. I like. <laughs> what, what kind of benefit would uh, <laughs> like? Hey, you know, instead of right. starting E one, P, uh, you know, PV one, you know, you're coming in right. as an E five. Right. So you know, and then while you're going to school too, there's a little stipend and different. It depends right, on different yeah. programs you're in. So, yeah, if you're SMP, you get a, a stipend, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on what you, if you're MS one, two, or three, or four, mm -hmm. uh, you're. I think at four, I was getting like five hundred dollars a mm -hmm. month, right? Which was a lot, you know, for not yeah. working and getting five hundred dollars a month. That was. That you was can a concentrate lot of, on your schoolwork. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to work. You know, mm -hmm. you get your pay from the reserve. Well, when you go to drill, you get your stipend, mm -hmm. and then if you have like uh, student loans that you're using that's paying for all your school, the army will pay all of it based on uh, the a program called the SLRP, which is uh, Student Loan Repayment Program. Mm -hmm. So let's just say if you got like a sixty thousand dollar student loan, mm -hmm. the army will pay all of that mm -hmm. based on you know your contract, 
and that you qualify for the SLRP. And uh, that's for officer course though, right? You're heading in an officer career, you can do it through enlisted as well? You can do it through a, uh, enlisted as okay. well. Because remember, when you're in the reserve, uh -huh. you're still considered enlisted, okay. right? So um, that's the benefit. If you go to the reserve, instead of offering like a scholarship, mm -hmm. you're gonna get that SLRP. Right. So you can still go to college once you're finished with your bachelor's uh -huh. degree. Uh, the Army will, will, pay it, uh, will pay it off. Well, listen, it all sounds great, but people are worried sometimes. They go to basic training or basic officer training, there's going to be some giant guy yelling at them, telling them to do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? Was that a little bit of a, you said you went to Fort Sill and uh, you know, maybe some angry drill sergeants looking at you and uh, telling you to do this and that. Uh, how'd that? How'd you fare with that? So, you know, for me, it was... Uh, you know, like I said, you know, back home, like, mm -hmm. I don't think it was as worse as my, you know, my <laughs> mom or my auntie so you kinda, yelling at me. So you kind of so I was kind of like, you know, uh, yeah. Trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> it, it wasn't really, you know, it didn't really affect me right. just from my upbringing and all right. that. I've heard a lot of other bad yellings than, uh, than what right. I Right. And it's changed a lot, I think, too. I think there's uh, a bigger change now, yeah. you know, with. You know, it's a it's a different generation that we're coming into, and and uh, the army is doing is doing an exceptional job with how they're approaching, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the um, enlisted uh, soldiers that are coming into the uh, the army and joining the army. Right, because you know the people who are doing all these support roles don't necessarily have to be able to you know uh, think clearly under stress while they're climbing underneath you know right. <laughs> barbed wire <laughs> while rockets are firing over their head you know it's like I'm an HR guy right I you know I do this or I do you know I've got the you know I make sure their checks get in okay and uh, or their their car loan that they want to get done gets done right you know so a little different so there, there is this whole support uh, array of support jobs that they're not you're never going to see any of that. Right yeah it's a uh you know, it's a different environment now. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of programs like the the EO Sharp and all these other programs that the Army does. Mm -hmm. And you know, the the Army is moving towards like people first down, right? Right. Uh, the people first approach. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, you know, it, it really comes down to who runs this Army, right? Right. It's the people, mm -hmm. right? So we really gotta be able to take care of our people and and be able to you know, stay on that course to where we can still accomplish the mission, right. you know, while taking care of our people. Yeah, because it's it's stress if you have to deploy or if there's you're preparing to deploy and, you know, there's family stress. So I think also that the, not only for the the soldier themselves, but it sounds like there's some programs for the families to assist right. them and support yeah. them. So for the family, there's a, there's a program called it's a Soldier Family Readiness Program. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that program, you know, in the absence of, you know, that that spouse that's mm -hmm. in the service, uh, there are uh, staffs within the SFRG mm -hmm. that's that's going to be able to help that family out in the absence of that soldier. Mm -hmm. You know whether it's uh, you know trying to get a hold of their soldier, they're not able to get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, or any support like financially and all the other right. stuff that the Army provides. You know, Army Emergency Relief, right. uh, AER. You know, they're able they're able to provide that support, and uh, <clears throat> you know the. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that the army provides, you know. Right. You know, considering, I think recently I was I was part of that uh, AMR water crisis, right? Okay. Uh, and um, from there, you know, the way the army responded to that, mm -hmm. like it was quick. You know, they had the AER mm -hmm. the guys that were there. They were issuing out checks to all these families, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and they also put all the families in uh, in temporary lodging, which was the hotel and offering them per diem, uh -huh. right? So the Army has done like an exceptional job taking right. care of uh, of people. And it goes back to that approach, people first, right? right. So, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of, of the Army and what they stand uh -huh. for and how they're taking care of people yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, I had a good experience. Uh, my son, uh, He's in the Air Force. Um, I kind of guided him that way. So the housing is kind of sometimes they have sometimes they have nice housing, but really I wouldn't take my experience back um, from the Army uh, for sure. Got to meet great friends, some friends with a lot of folks right now through through the career. I'm sure that you you keep up with uh, you've met so many met so many different uh, uh, people. Um, where where are you where do you expect to go from here? You know, this a mid career sort of situation. You're recruiting. Do you expect to stay in Hawaii, or or the army? Sometimes you know those folks in D.C. They have to make decisions about you know all of a sudden you they're evaluating whether you're going to get promoted. They're evaluating whether maybe we, you'd fit better in this other situation over here. How does that work for for folks in there? It makes a little people anxious mid career. Maybe they're in their you know late 30s. They're like, oh, I've got still got maybe another 10 years of this career. Where are they going to send me? 
Yeah, so yeah, for me it all depends, right? So right now my my next move is to to make it to uh, my major rank, right? Mm -hmm. So if if I get promoted to major, if the army sees me fit to get promoted to the next mm -hmm. rank, then the next job would be kind of like a support operations officer mm -hmm. or a brigade S four. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of like move on to the the echelons of, uh, right. uh, of what the army instead of a company level now. They're kind of like a field grade now. Uh -huh. right? Goes so up to a battalion right, or a so regiment. You're, or you're going to be working for the battalion or a brigade or anything mm -hmm. higher than mm -hmm. that as a staff. Field grade officer. Yeah, field grade officer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then after that, you know, then you get into another command position again mm -hmm. or a staff position mm -hmm. as a lieutenant colonel. So, yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's the thing is there's there's these promotional opportunities and it's usually objective. There's some subjectivity, but it's, you know, it's points based and what the needs of the Army are. So right. you can sort of prepare and gear yourself for it. It's not like a random kind of thing. Yeah. No, it's not random. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's kind of like a career progression. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I like. You know, I always push this uh, towards the kids so that way they understand, right? So when you look at all the branches, right, mm -hmm. the Army is the biggest of, of them all. So the promotion rate for the Army is so much faster. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a first sergeant that's uh, been in the Army for 14 years. Wow. Well, and, uh, and that's crazy, right. right? I mean, where do you hear, like, a, a first sergeant, you know, someone that's promoted to first sergeant, like in the Marine, Air Force, or, or other branches? It's usually after you're 20. It, right. right. Yeah, it's you usually, get your, it's, uh, so the promotion rate in the Army is so much faster. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we try to, you know, let this, the, of course, it's going to, you know, ultimately come down to their decision, mm -hmm. right, for the, the applicants that we're doing, mm -hmm. if, whether they want to join another branch or what. Mm -hmm. But we got to, we let them know, hey, look, you could be a, an E4 or an E5 within right. three years in the Army. You know, these other branches, it's not like they don't want to promote you. It's just right. they don't have any slots the slots for to slot right. you in mm -hmm. and promote you, right? right? So it's really hard for those other branches to get promoted like the Army. Right. And With promotion, you get a pay raise, and there's right, different yeah. opportunities there for yeah, training. Because some people, you know, they're they're in for the money, right? Mm -hmm. So do you want to want be an E5 and get paid as E5 in three years? Right. Or do you want to be an E4 for, like, the rest of, like, your six years right. in, in right. that service? Yeah. So... It all comes down to that. There's some financial, I would say it's a financial decision, uh -huh. I would say. Right. Yeah, I think so. And and uh, and with all the different support mechanisms, I mean, it's a great uh, career path for anyone who's thinking about it. So if um, Joe Kimo wants to come right now and uh, say, how I need to, uh, I want to join, just like you walked in. How do they do it? Where do they go? So we have five uh, stations here on Oahu, right? Uh, so we've got Kapolei. Uh, Mililani, uh, Pearl Ridge. We got one down here at uh, Kapiolani. Okay. And then we got one at Kaneohe. So that's okay. here on Oahu. They right. can go there. Hey, talk to your local recruiter, and, uh -huh. and uh, you know they'll hook you up. You know with all the benefits that we got offered right now. Uh, for the outer islands, uh, we've got one in Kauai. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got one in Maui, mm -hmm. and then we got two in uh, Big Island, which is Hilo and Kona. East side, west side, yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, they can go to those, you know, we got recruiters there uh, that if they, you know, want to pursue the Army as a mm -hmm. career, whether it's in the reserve or in active duty, mm -hmm. yeah, you're more than welcome. We can help you out. And it's a good time right now to go ask, like, hey, what kind of benefits have you got for me? You know, really, you know, and those recruiters are excited to show them all the programs, right? right because they yeah. want to help them to get in because that's their job. But they want to show them all the programs and... and uh, and help them, to, I think, to advance. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, there's a lot of programs, a lot of jobs, and a lot of bonuses right mm -hmm. now. The $50,000 uh, bonus is still, they're still offering now, and I don't know when that's gonna end. Is it for certain jobs? Uh, so it's, everything is different, right? right. So it's up to $50,000. Uh -huh. So there's a quick ship bonus. Uh -huh. right? I see, if you're ready to go like next like, month, within like next month. 30, 60, 90 days. Okay. Like there's a bonus for that, right? Uh -huh. Uh, there's a bonus for jobs. Okay. There's a bonus for an additional year to enlist. Mm -hmm. So everything is different. But you know, I've seen a lot of people that we've enlisted so far. Uh, uh, the man, they they capped out on that 50k. Right, right. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you know, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I don't see a bonus like that. Yeah, I've never seen any bonus uh -huh. like that. You know, I uh, I remember coming in. I had zero bonus. <laughs> I had zero bonus coming in. <laughs> I wanted to. I had a vision for my life. Not. Uh, I didn't know that this money was available. Yeah. Just, just give me five grand. I, right. I'll enlist for whatever. Right. But now you know, fifty thousand uh -huh. dollars. Wow. That's crazy. 
So now you're mid-career. What's your uh, what's your PT? Uh, how does that uh, you know <laughs> you don't have to do formation anymore? And uh, you know, and uh, everyone doing the group PT now that you're kind of here in Hawaii. Do you, how do you guys get some guys together, and how do you get some exercise so, in? So every every quarter, right? So PT is at the uh, the station level, right? Uh -huh. uh, and then you know, of course, me and first round will do our own little uh, PT at the uh -huh. gym and stuff like that. But uh, every quarter we'll do like a competition. So uh, last quarter, uh, I would say about a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe three weeks ago, mm -hmm. we had a there, there was this thing called Buffalo Ball. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that we had it was a. Uh, it was like a 14-pound medicine ball okay. that we were just uh, tossing around. Right. And uh, you got to, so you got two teams, uh -huh. and the goal is to try to push that 14-pound uh, medicine ball the other way. Uh -huh. If you cross the other end zone, then uh, y y you're scored. So whoever's got the ball, you're trying to push them back, and you're trying to move forward, and right, there's a group yeah. of guys pushing you back. So almost like a rugby, but like a yeah, heavy rugby, ball. Yeah, rugby, but it was, a, it was a pretty heavy ball. So oh, 14 pounds. And then yeah. it was kind of like raining that day, so... <laughs> I don't think it got to 14. It was probably like 18 pounds of water in that <laughs> so Yeah, so it was it was soaked uh, wet, and uh, we were tossing that thing around, and it was, I think we were pretty beat up after That's that. That's good you fun, know, sounds like. A lot of fun PT uh, in the uh, recruiting station, mm -hmm. uh, in the recruiting command, and, and I actually uh, like the flexibility of right. it, you know, so. It's really good. Yeah, just getting out and move, and, and and that's the thing. And and now you know you're Hawaii. Oh, what a what a nice place to have a duty station. You know, I'm right. jealous of you, Captain T. Captain <laughs> T. You know, you, this is your spot. So if you're not here, you're not working. You're not bringing folks in. Uh, you know, what are you doing? So for me, you know, I've uh, you know, either I'll go up to Cocoa Head. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like sometimes mostly on Sundays. Uh huh. Uh, or I'll I'll just uh, play. Uh, you know, I, I have a. I like playing uh, volleyball, so oh, okay. I'll, either I'll be at Kapiolani Park okay. uh, to play with a couple of folks, okay. or I'll be down at uh, Waikiki playing uh, beach volleyball. But beach volleyball, it's kind of hard on me right now. <laughs> well, I see those guys, and uh, that's extra hard because of the sand and everything. Right, and, yeah. and plus, you know, I don't want to take off my shirt. I'd have to, you know, scare everybody. But <laughs> all those guys, all those guys down there looking fit, and the ladies looking fit, and uh, and so I mean, again, Hawaii is uh, wonderful. Where did you pick up that uh, love of volleyball, and did you do that uh, growing up? Or so I did that growing up. You know, I um, I actually uh, I think it was 2016 or. I think it was 2016. I got selected for all army volleyball. That's okay. the other thing that the army offers. That's right. right. There's sports. There's boxers. There sports. And, yeah, There's runners. boxing and all the other stuff. So I got selected for the all army volleyball. However, I was at Fort Lee, so my command there told me, "Hey, you can go do this." Wow. But when I went to my new unit, uh, they told me, "Hey, we're getting ready to go to Afghanistan," and uh, then they send the half of the brigade. And I was the one that was in the rear uh -huh. <laughs> with the gear, I would say. So I never, I, I was actually playing, uh, I was sitting in as a Brigade S4, which uh -huh. was like a major position. Sure. Uh, and they, they wouldn't let me go. Because uh, it was uh, important, it had yeah, to be staffed. There, there was no one else. Yeah, I, had to, right. I had to fill in that, uh, that vacancy. So I wasn't able to actually uh, go play for that uh, uh -huh. all-army team, but I got uh -huh. selected for it. So. Sure. You know, the opportunities are there. You know, boxing, whatever you can think of. I think yeah. they even have like a... A fitness team that they right. do in the Olympics. Most of right. the athletes that are in the Olympics, mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the the previous one they had a lot of army athletes that right. were like uh, power uh, weight. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, weight lift. Yeah, yes, yeah, so power lifters yeah, and power lifters stuff. and all the other stuff. So <clears throat> it's great opportunities out there. Yeah. Um, plus, there's opportunities uh, if you're enlisted. Um, you can apply for. There's the service academy. There's sort of a prep school you can go to. If um, what is it, uh, West Point Prep or something like that? If again, there's so many different ways. Once yeah. you get in, if you're smart, you're paying attention, and you're not going out. You know, there's a different lifestyle too in the army where um, it can get a little. You know, a bunch of 18 year olds with money in a barracks, and uh, <laughs> it can, it can <laughs> yeah, get a little so out of hand. So, uh, so trying to, what are some resources for the young recruits getting in and to keep and stay on on path while they're in? You know, I mean, there's a lot. You know, like I said, there's a lot of opportunities out there. If you know, like you, you mentioned the academies, right? So mm -hmm. the academy, you know, you get, you know, you get a letter of recommendation, you put a packet together, mm -hmm. and then they'll review it and see if you right. you qualify or you're eligible or you're a good candidate, right. I would say. Uh, and then they'll they'll send you to West Point. Right. You know, uh, or you can do <laughs> ROTC. Right. You know, there's a scholarship right for ROTC. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to go anywhere. You get to experience that uh, 
uh, nothing like West Point, though. Right. You, but you get to experience, uh, you know, that college life. Right. But also doing ROTC and getting ready for that commission. So that one you can do uh, at any school. Right. Any school that you get accepted to, right? So if you want to stay in Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, you can go to UHROTC. Mm -hmm. Right. If you want to go anywhere else, like Alabama or anything right. else, you can do there any or where there's any ROTC program. Right. And I remember there was opportunities too. If you went to a predominantly black college, there were some opportunities and some different uh, benefits. And so, the Army really, um, I think, really tries is uh, what the, the Army of One was the thing. What's the new motto now for uh, uh, for Army? Uh, again, I, I just believe their mission is it. It seems to work and and. Uh, but are you able to fill all your spots? How many uh, open spots are you trying to? Uh, it's the same for everybody out here in Hawaii. I think staffing, you know, trying to find. Yeah. Uh, are you able to find all the people that you need uh, these days? When you, like for for, for filling in, yeah, for enlistment for and for yeah. So I know most of the the people that are in. There's a really big shortage on the reserve side, mm -hmm. right? And uh, everybody wants to go active. Everybody wants world, to right? go, you know, out of the island and uh, and explore different things. However, I really think the the ninth MSC as a reserve, mm -hmm. they they have really good opportunities mm -hmm. there. You know, you get to do what you love as a mm -hmm. civilian, and then you get to travel in the summertime when you do annual training. Whether it's, it's about Guam, two weeks, Alaska, two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up to twenty eight days. Okay, uh, up to twenty uh, twenty eight or twenty nine. You're getting paid your full pay during that right, time. Right, you get to pay your you know you get to get paid your full pay, mm -hmm. uh, and there's. You know, so you kind of have that flexibility, right. right? You get to do play part-time soldier. Uh -huh. You get to do your civilian job, uh -huh. and if you wanna, if you wanna do pursue your education, you can still do that too, uh -huh. right? Well, and then opportunities in active duty side, uh, you can always do um, tuition assistance or online school, right? Which most of them, you know, it's doable, it's doable, but it takes a lot of commitment, right? But I think that's the only one that we're running on. Uh, trying to fill in those vacancies and that's at the reserve mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so but you know people just need to understand the flexibility that the reserve offers right for them yeah you don't have to, to go stay down local to, yeah you don't have to go down to Popeyes and work well not nothing yeah. that there's nothing wrong with Popeyes but you right. can do you know it just helps to augment your but you're growing at the same time right, you're learning yeah. a new skill you're learning maybe a new trade exactly and I think the other reason why is because the reserve has a competition right it's the National Guard you know the National Guard is great, mm -hmm. right? National Guard is great. They're, they're really. Good. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are in there, but you know when we talk about the benefits, uh, there's a difference when we talk about state benefits mm -hmm. and federal benefits, right? Right. So we, they really have to understand, like, hey, you know, where do you stand? You wanna you wanna have state benefits or federal benefits? Right. And sometimes, you know, because we all wear the same uniform, uh -huh. right? You know, people think that the National Guard is the reserve or right. the actual army, and you know, they just don't have the same benefits. Right? Yeah, they're they're not the same benefits, right? So, mm -hmm. and you know, you just gotta weigh your options there. Mm -hmm. And most of most of the people that like I have people that are in my recruiting uh -huh. uh, company right now, they were from the National Guard, okay. right? And uh, they had to switch over because you know, there was not a lot of opportunities for. Uh, AGR, which is what we talked about, uh -huh. like Active Army. Guard Reserve, right. to where you can uh, um, get the benefits for active right. duty, uh -huh. but you're still considered a reservist. Right. Yeah, and that's it's like the best of both worlds. And then right. even yeah. if you go active, there's even active opportunities where you're you're working active as a reserved uh, soldier right. and at home, and basically instead of being out in the middle of you know nowhere uh, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but some of those, you know, I um, there's so many different opportunities and and we're, we're just appreciative of the time that that you've spent sort of educate uh, the team here that's why we came to the boss's office of uh, captain t and so um yeah. what's the best way if they want to like online if they you know you know is there a phone number or you know what's the best way to get army recruiting so army recruiting i mean most of the time you know people will google <laughs> like right, right. army army uh recruiting offices like you know most of them we can find them on google right however uh, like I said, all the stations that are around here, uh -huh. uh, our guys are out there at schools prospecting right. uh, for leads and all the other stuff. But we also have like uh, table setups everywhere else. Okay. But you know, we try to put banners somewhere. Uh -huh. But I would say the best way, if if you want, if you don't have any idea where they're at, right, I would just 
We go to Google and Google and call. That's what that's what I did. Yeah. I made sure you know it's just easy. It's got different recruiting offices. Right. Maybe the one that's closest to you. Do the phone number. Exactly. That that uh, sergeant or, or whoever it is is going to be uh, helping you out, getting getting yeah. in the right way. If you put in U.S. Army recruiting, like you'll pop up any station mm -hmm. that's here on the wall. We're on the outer, outer island, mm -hmm. so yeah, th that's probably the fastest way. Uh huh. Because I'm not going to tell them, hey, go to this usarmy.mil. <laughs> right, right. I don't, right. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> you know, but that's right. I'd say Google is probably your best, yeah, your best knows, bet. Everybody knows knows Google. It's helpful. Yeah. So listen, it's been a real pleasure, uh, and we're hopeful that uh, you're successful and continue to be successful, and that uh, as you come up for major, we're all rooting for you. And uh, but. You know, any any last thoughts that, that you want to share um, as we're heading out? Again, we're we're so glad and thankful that we came to the this uh, this boss's office, and uh, let us Thank know if you, you have sir. anything you'd like to share. You know, for for me, you know, there's a, you know, especially our Polynesian community that's mm -hmm. out here, right? You know, never let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. Right. right. You know, just uh, keep on moving forward, mm -hmm. and and be consistent in what you do, and uh, you know, if you if you feel like you need help, hey, there's a lot of people around here mm -hmm. that can help you out. So, yeah. you know, but uh, that's my only advice is uh, to believe in yourself. Yeah. Believe in yourself and what you can do. And uh, I think the Army and uh, what you're providing here provides a way, uh, sort of an opportunity for someone to grow and to see the world and uh, maybe to do something a little bit different and, and maybe find themselves. Right, yeah. You know, uh, like if, if, if this was me, like I would say 14 years ago, uh -huh. I would be a camera shy right now. Right. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, the army really d did uh, you know, help me mature. Right. You know, as a person and and develop me as a leader to where I am at today. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm able to speak confident confidently. You know, I'm I'm not afraid to, you know, go out there and help people out. Right. You know, sometimes right. you know you have these great ideas, but you know, it, it, what really matters is the application and if you're you're really out there right. applying those leadership skills and all the other stuff. So, right. you know, the Army really does help you grow professionally and, you know, mature you as a person. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And again, uh, thank you for your leadership and uh, uh, as a servant, and thank you for your service. Um, again, spending this kind of time and this devotion to the work uh, is, uh, is awesome. So we're, we're thankful for you and, and uh, for what you're doing for our country. Sir, thank you. Thank you so much for letting me put, be a part of this. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. So no, we'll uh, we'll we'll be back and uh, and we'll uh, definitely talk some more. And and uh, you want to keep us informed how things are going. Too easy, sir. Too okay. Easy. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. You betcha. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Make sure to subscribe to Hawaii Boss and follow us on social media at Hawaii Boss Podcast at the links in the description. We'll see you soon in the boss's office.